Peace, brothers and sisters who have arrived here on this channel. Something that I realized that I must do this video for you is that it is always on the self same date. It seems like that in the Bible, God has a pattern to do things in the self same date as they are done previously. And because of this, I realized something amazing that points to the soon rapture of the church that is connected to the church's own creation date. So in this video, you're going to see what I have discovered, and I'm going to show you guys, to the best of my knowledge, what can happen very, very soon to the body of Christ. But before that, if you haven't yet know me, watched my channel, this is it. I'm Ricardo Garcia. I've been doing videos about the end times, about the uh, revelation, book of the bible about the soon rapture of the church for the past seven years i already lost the channel because of telling truths and now i'm in the last uh, channel here trying to portray and send the message that the rapture is going to be happening very very soon i have a playlist here of english videos that i suggest you to watch as much as you can to keep on with us through what we already know because this video we are going to continue from where we stopped and we stopped here waiting for the rapture on second Passover that just passed again. So as we were approaching the second Passover, I wasn't feeling that it's going to, it was going to be the rapture. And right before it, I, I watched the video that enlightened me to when actually this could happen. And this, uh, cover here of the video already gives us a hint but uh, you will see here in this video that things happens uh, on the exact same date and that shouldn't be different for the church so before i continue here please if you're watching this video tell me if the microphone is okay if it's good so i can continue here without problems sometimes the microphone gives me some problems here and i need to adjust before the video continue and nobody can listen to it so let me know here on the chat if the microphone is okay and then we can proceed with the video here for you guys okay shalom peace brothers peace mara peace time tina nato peace to all of you here in the chat i guess everything is working fine so let's continue here on the video so First things first, we're going to look at some patterns here from the Bible in order to understand why is things always happening here on the self same date. So the first thing you're going to look at the Passover pattern. The Passover pattern points us to patterns that happen on the same date as Passover. So the first one we're going to look here is the Ark's resting place. So Noah's Ark rested on Mount Ararat. On the same day that the Ark of Noah came to rest on Mount Ararat, on that same day, that was the same date that Israel enters into Egypt. So Israel entered the land of Egypt to escape the seven years of famine. So Israel entered with Joseph into the land of Egypt to escape the seven years of famine on the self same date as the date of the Noah's Ark uh, resting on Mount Ararat. Just I'm reminded here, Mount Ararat means the Mount of reverse the curse. So the curse of the flood was reversed when the Ark rested on Mount Ararat. And Israel entered Egypt on the exact same date of the Ark resting there. But it didn't stop there because also Israel left Egypt on the very same day that they entered, on the very same day that the ark rested on Mount Ararat. So the Exodus begins, and on that date, led by Moses, Israelites departed Egypt. And we know from our history here that the fourth is also true. The crucifixion of Christ centuries later also happened on the very same date. The Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, died on the cross, redeeming humanity from the bondage of sin. So, the ark's resting place, Israel entered into Egypt, the Exodus, or is Israel's exiting 
Egypt and then also Jesus' crucifixion. All happened in the self same date on the 14th to the 15th of Nisan. Of course, the on Noah's timeline, his calendar was reversed. So what he was calling the seventh month, it was actually the first month because with Moses, God uh, changed the calendar and called the seventh month the first and the first month the seventh. So that's why on Noah's story is uh, reversed. But if you replace accordingly, is the same date. So all of this happens in the same date, and that's a Passover pattern. But there's even more patterns here that we're going to look. And the next one is the Pentecost pattern. And that's the most important for us. Because first, Noah's dove. So on the same day that Noah released the dove to explore the land, 40 days after seeing the top of the mountain. So once the ark rested on Mount Ararat, they waited a bit. And then the top of the mountains were seen as they were inside the ark. 40 days after the top of the mountains were seen, Noah released a dove. And this dove went around looking for some place to land. It didn't find a place and then returned to the ark. But that's the day that Noah released the dove. But also on that day, Noah released the crow. So the crow didn't come back. And then Noah released the dove and the dove came back. So that was a day that you have to pay attention from Noah's story. And that day was the same day that Israel worshipped the golden calf and was cursed and missed the covenant. And meanwhile, 3,000 people died on that day. So the golden calf incident happened when Israel uh, didn't wait for Moses to go back from the mountain. And then they created this golden calf to worship instead of worship God. They just took them out of Egypt. And because of that, they, was, they were cursed. They missed entering the promised land because of that also. And they missed the covenant of uh, marriage with God because of that disobedience. So that was the same date that Noah released the dove. And what does it have to do with it? We're going to keep on looking at it keep on checking to see what happens on this self same date here on three the bad report so on the same day that they believed the same day that they created the golden calf incident on that exact same day they believed the false report from the spies that went to spy the promised land and because of this belief and spreading the false report about the promised land, then the Israelites received a curse to wander in the desert for 40 years. So these three key important um, scenes here in the Bible happened in the same day. Noah's releasing the dove, the golden calf incident, and the bread report. They all happened with, on the very same day. But it does not stop there. We also have the following here. Let me just fix because the next one is turning to be the fifth. Just fix it here. So, okay. Fourth, Jesus received the Holy Spirit. So on the same day, on the exact same day that Jesus received the Holy Spirit as a dove in his baptism. So when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, that's when he saw the dove coming into Jesus. And that's when Jesus received the Holy Spirit. And right after he received the Holy Spirit, he went into the desert for 40 days. So you're seeing here that there's some connection with the story, the stories here we see in the Bible with doves, with 40 days, with Israel being disobedient. So these this are all building up a story here 
then leads to the church as well. Because on the fifth story here, we see that the Holy Spirit, Spirit arrival also happened on the very same day. On the same day that Jesus sent out the Holy Spirit to the 120 people, and the church was born, and then 3,000 people were saved. On that same day, that's the Holy Spirit on Acts 2 came to the 120, and then 3,000 people were born again. So you are seeing here patterns from the stories of the Bible that points to the dove, Israel being disobedient, Jesus receiving the Holy Spirit and sending the Holy Spirit, and a period of 40, 40 days or 40 years, also 3,000 die and 3,000 being saved. So the question here, should this be the church's departure? Because the dove, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, could leave the earth with the church on the very same day that he came to the earth for us to leave to the promised land that, Jesus, that the Israel did not go in because of disobedience. And that's what is going to happen in the tribulation. They will be in disobedience. That's why they are going to have to go through the tribulation. And we are going to be going to the promised land, which is now the Father's house in heaven. And that's precisely 40 jubilees after the Holy Spirit being sent by Jesus on that exact same date. So it is very likely that the church departure happens on the same day as the church began. Just like we see many patterns in the Bible with the Passover and now also with Pentecost. We see this as a, a pattern that God always fulfills. So what are the odds of the Israelites entering the promised land and leaving the promised land 430 years afterwards on the very same date? And that's the very same day that Jesus died and resurrected uh, centuries later. So God specializes in doing things on the very same date. And it could very well be that the moment that the church began with the Holy Spirit could be the moment that the church leaves with the Holy Spirit, leaving the world here to endure this seven years of tribulation while we are into the promised land, which is the Father's house, that Israel missed entering. So we're going to receive what? We're going to receive the wedding supper and those that are going to stay behind, they will receive the the chalice of wine of wrath of God. So it is very interesting here to see these patterns and make it work because we are approaching very fast this moment here that celebrates the church's uh, beginning. And just to uh, make sure here, we know that what the Catholic Church and most of the evangelical churches are saying that Pentecost is within a few days from now. That's not correct. And we're going to understand this with Moses' timeline and also later with Jesus' timeline because God always fulfills his stories one by one. And he's always fulfilling those more than once with many different stories and with this we're going to see that what they what people nowadays call pentecost it's not actually the true pentecost so moses timeline begins with this moses led the exodus so israelites leave egypt on the 50th day of the first month the month of nisan that we know today that's the first act here of Moses in the Bible that creates this pattern. Then, the second thing that it is very interesting here in the Bible is the moment that they reach Mount Sinai and then God descends on Mount Sinai. So Israel camps on the 15th day of the third month and then after a few days, God appears on the mount and gives the Ten Commandments orally. So that happened on the 15th day of the third month. 
That's after Exodus and after walking for a few days in the desert there. After that, we know that the Israelites did not want to hear God. They were afraid and they asked for Moses to go up the mountain and talk to God and then come back and tell them what God said. So they kind of rejected God there because of, they were afraid of God. The, the sight was terrorizing for them. And then Moses went up the Mount Sinai to talk to God and then receive the Ten Commandments in the tablets. But they couldn't wait long enough to wait for Moses to come back. And that's what happened in the third scene here, the golden calf. So on the eighth day of the fifth month, that's when Israel made a golden calf and Moses descended angrily and smashed the tablets of the law. The first tablets that were made, Moses smashed in his anger because the Israelites that was they just left Egypt through the power of God, they already were worshiping an idol there, which is not God. So that scene there of the golden calf on the eighth day of the fifth month is the date that happened. And lastly, we know that after this scene, Moses goes back again on Mount Sinai. He stays there more days. And then finally, he returns with new stone tablets. And that happened on the 10th day of the seventh month. Moses descends again from Mount Sinai with his face shining. His face was, was right, uh, radiant. And then he brings again the, ten, the new 10 stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. And that happened on the Day of Atonement, we know today, the 10th day of the 7th month. So pay attention to these dates that appear in the story of Moses in the Bible, for you to understand that Jesus fulfilled those dates uh, in his form, in his timeline, in his time frame. So now we're going to look at Jesus' timeline compared to Moses' timeline. So what happened on the 15th day of the first month for Jesus? Well, of course, Jesus died on the cross on that day. So from the 14th to the 15th, on the dusk, that's when he released the Spirit, and that's when he died. And then a lot of people, a lot of evangelical churches, and also the Catholic Church, says that 40 days after his death on the cross, that's when he ascended into heaven, which is not correct. That's... Uh, bad assumption of a, a bad reading from the Bible because it doesn't match anything else in the Bible and God is always matching one thing to the other so what happened is that on the 15th day of the third month that was the full moon again on the, th on the third month that's when Jesus ascended into heaven what people are calling Shavuot or Pentecost, or the Jews call it Shavuot nowadays, and the church calls Pentecost. That's the date that actually Jesus ascended into heaven. Instead of uh, ascending 10 days before this date, and then sending the Spirit 10 days after. That's not correct. We know that on the, the second coming of Jesus, will happen there on the 10th day of the 7th month, because precisely that is where, or that is when, he will atone for the sins of the Jews again. In the second coming, he will step on the Mount of Olives and split into two. He will destroy the Antichrist with his army, and then he will atone for the sins of Israel again. We know that this is his second coming in the end of the tribulation. Then there's only one thing left, which is the moment that the church began when he sent the Holy Spirit. So 50 days or a Pentecost after his ascension, that's when he sent, he poured the Spirit. Because Israel missed because of disobedience, but the church received the Holy Spirit because the church believed. So while Israel is receiving the the wrath of God, the wrath, the wine cup of wrath of God, the church is receiving the wine cup of marriage 
of proposal. That's why the church received the Holy Spirit on the exact same date that Israel missed entering the promised land, on the exact same date that Israel missed the marriage with God because they were disobedient. So you see here a pattern that Jesus fulfills compared to Moses, and it's precept upon precept. So we see that Jesus fulfills the exact same dates that God uh, made Moses work on in his time frame. Also, compared to the story of Noah, we will see the same, same key dates, which is very important here. I couldn't make a larger video uh, out of this because there's a, already a brother talking about this, and his name is Dr. Barry All. His latest video talks about this, how Shavuot is not Pentecost. Pentecost is actually the Feast of New Wine, which is hidden from the Bible there, but it's found on the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. That is the feast that happened on the fifth month, within the time frame that Israel is afraid because of the ninth of Av. So he they did an excellent video, one hour over, one hour long, talking about this, explaining this, and it is correct. It is non-debatable. It is a true revelation that we received and understood here in the end times that is hidden, has been hidden for a long period of time for those that are not seeking it. So his video is very good. If you want to watch it, I suggest you watch it because it explains much, much better than I just did here. This is just simply to tell you that what people are calling Shavuot or Pentecost, now in, within a few days or a few weeks, it is not actually Pentecost. The Pentecost all actually happens on the fifth month all the way there in August for us. And that's our high expectancy for the rapture of the church because that's the date that the church began. Now, let's take a look here at the charge that I gave you guys here. So we are now here past second Passover, approaching here the third month when the new moon is siphoned. So we are approaching here the highest time frame for us to pay attention for the rapture because that's the beginning of the summer in Israel and beginning of the summer here in the world also. And we are approaching the the month, the months, the third, fourth, and the fifth month, which is a very important um, time frame for us to watch for the church. Because when God descended into Mount Sinai, that there he was proposing to Israel to marry Israel, and all the way into the fifth month, that the that's what that's what they were supposed to wait on God for. That's when they were supposed to receive the marriage with the Ten Commandments there. So from the third month all the way into the fifth month, it's a very important time frame for us to pay attention because that's uh, the time frame that God wanted to marry Israel, but couldn't because of disobedience. But we know that Jesus, the Christ, he will marry his bride, and it's very likely that this happens within this time frame. So... The most important time frame for it to watch, that's why it has been read uh, for a long period of time here on my chart. You guys that uh, watched my oldest videos, you know this, because this is the highest time frame for us to watch, because it's talking about marriage, it's talking about doors, it's also talking about Pentecost and wine, cup of marriage. And this is here the highest time frame that we have. If we look at the sky clock here, we see that this also applies because of this. If you watch when the sun and the moon were on the first resurrection, the resurrection of Christ on, the, on Passover, they were like this. So we know that the first resurrection, the first resurrection of Christ, happened on the middle of the first month, right there. Full moon of the first month, sun in Aries, full moon in Libra on the scales. So we see that this is a pattern here that we can pay attention to uh, receive some important information about the resurrections that will happen. Because we know for certainty that on the seventh month, 
there in the fall feasts in the end of the tribulation period of seven years that's when there will be the another resurrection of those that died within the time frame of the tribulation and they will uh, live again to rule with christ so we know this happens in the end of the tribulation within the fall feasts that's the promise and that's also a feast for us to pay attention so we know that uh, the first resurrection or the first part of the res first resurrection happened within the middle of the first month and the last part of the first resurrection will happen on the middle part of the seventh month right there on the uh, full moon as well so now if we go by this by looking at this chart the sky clock here we can assume that the rapture of the church that happens before the tribulation the resurrection of the church that began on pentecost on acts 2 and will last up until the day that the holy spirit leaves this earth with the church of course the holy spirit will come back with moses and elijah the two witnesses to preach and people will receive the holy spirit again after the spirit leaves but for a period of time all of those that have the holy spirit will leave the earth with the holy spirit by looking at this we can assume that perhaps perpendicular to this the next resurrection part of the re resurrection with the church's resurrection happens here on a perpendicular line out of this one here that we just saw so it could happen within here the middle of the fourth month so as you can see here right in the first month of the yellow line that's when the first resurrection happened we know that on the first month of the blue line that's when the the next the last resurrection will happen it could very well be on the first month of the orange line here which is season so um spring summer uh, autumn or fall and winter so on the first month of summer that could be the resurrection of the church and the rapture of the church and the last one will be the resurrection of the dead could happen there on the first month of the winter so it is a pattern here that we could understand as our human eyes see that this could be the way that god do it that's why it's very important here the fourth month the month of the door also the third month the fourth and the fifth month here but mostly the fourth fifth and the sixth month because cancer here used to be uh, the place where you put sheep lion is the lion of the tribe of judah that's jesus and virgo is the virgin it is the church that will marry the lion the jesus of course so it is very important here for us to pay attention but that could not be it because if you just saw that the church began on the eighth of the fifth month the eighth of av then it could just happen like this so the resurrection happens right when the church began the church leaves on the same date and then the next one could be here so it would form like an x that could very well be how it is played out but regardless of it being on the middle of the fourth month or by the beginning of the fifth month those two are very important key dates for us to pay attention because here we see two constellations being played out the lion and the virgin which is the church and jesus and right there we see the fish and the aquarians so aquarius is a type of this earth that we live and those fishes one is taken and the water one is left in the aquarium to be resurrected at the end so this could very well be the moment that we can expect the rapture from the fourth month all the way into the fifth month but remember on the fifth month eighth day that's when the church began on the feast of pentecost feast of new wine and could this could very well be the moment that we leave okay so you are now convinced that 
the church might leave in the summertime because it is we are expecting this summertime uh, rapture with this summertime resurrection you are convinced that this could be on the feast of new wine which is right there on the eighth day of the fifth month the month of av around august so you're convinced that this is how it will play out the revelation the rapture of the church and so on now you ask me why 2024 so every year we have the fifth month every year we have the the feast of new wine on every year we have the fourth month and the fifth month and everything else why this would play out on 2024 then i could spend another half an hour here explaining why 2024 is so important but i will leave this to my brother here aaron from god a minute to tell you why this could very well be so in his latest video and uh, by the time i'm doing this video it, it was his latest video he did this and quickly explained why 2024 is so important in 12 key uh, facts here that shows us that 2024 is the key date for us to pay attention to because the passover of christ could very well have happened on april 25th of the year 31 which means for us 2031 is his second coming 2000 years after his death and resurrection which means 2024 seven years before that should be the rapture seven years before the end of the tribulation so this is just one example he gave 12 i suggest you to watch his latest video because this shows you guys how close we are to the rapture why 2024 is important and how we are entering within the season that we can expect the rapture to happen and that's amazing for us and we can be very happy awaiting for this soon return of christ for us now that i have explained it all for you guys i have some updates that i'm very pleased to show you guys so how is my family going this is a few photos and videos of them so they're here playing ava and haziel they are here growing up uh, ava is already one month old and haziel is one one year and two months old and here he's playing with her take a look <laughs> So here he is playing with her already. So there's no jealousy. People were uh, were thinking that he was to become jealous of the new baby, but he he's not jealous. He's playful with her. We just have to to watch because he doesn't know how to play yet. But that's him with her. And now uh, the little girl here is growing up, and she began to smile recently. So I have a video for you guys here as well. So there you go. You just watched one of the first laughs that we were able to capture this on video. So everything is working out fine here in our house. And I thank you guys for your support. I thank you guys for your prayers and your blessings here. And I pray for God to keep on sending people like you here to watch the videos and also to bless us as we can also bless you guys. And before I can finish here, I have an excellent uh, news for you because if you watched my previous video i had a huge announcement to make and this huge announcement is about to be uh, sent on the channel as this following video so here is a thumbnail of the video that if everything works out fine will be released on the afternoon of the 1st of june on my channel this is a project that i have been working for so long for god it is the by far the biggest, the hardest, the most time consuming and the most, uh, the most, uh, the best project that I have ever done for the church and for God. And this one here, I will be releasing on June the 1st, if everything works out as planned. 
This is an action, the best action that the church, uh, the end times church can uh, take at this moment here as we are expecting the rapture. And I have been studying a lot and doing a lot of work to release this. So if you don't know what this is yet, I still have some uh, spots on my email list to, to give you guys a heads up. For those that want, my email is on my previous video. Uh, check there for you to, to send me an email. But if you just want to wait out to see what is this, wait on for the 1st of June because I will release the official announcement video, the, first, the official launch video of this project. And I'm very happy and excited for you guys to know what this is and how this can benefit the church and the whole world. Those few people that are close to me that already know this, they are amazed by this project and they are very uh, excited to see it growing as well so by june the first the video will be there on my channel for you guys to watch the official announcement of this great project to be uh, released for the church amen i hope you are you guys are blessed by this video i hope you guys are excited that we are leaving so very soon i hope you guys know that uh, 2024 is a very important date and that the church began and on Pentecost and we should leave on this very same date the true Pentecost which is a feast of wine I hope you are blessed by this I hope that you prepare your last few things before you leave here because you might just have a couple more months or so until the rapture takes place so we don't have much time, so do what you can for the time that you still have in order for you to bless people, also for you to acquire treasures in heaven. Amen. Maranatha, I pray that you are blessed by this, and I hope to see you guys very, very soon in the kingdom of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Maranatha.